Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I hope you're well. And just to let you know, I am in the middle of creating a Pro, I forget. The, <laughs> I forget the name of the uh, the page. Let me give me a sec. Um, Patreon, Patreon, a Patreon page. And I normally wear my glasses, so I can't actually see where I am. Um, but the light is shining. I don't know if you can see. The light shines proper. Unless I kind of go like that. Or like that. So I do this without my glasses. I'm going to rely on my words. On my words. There is the sound of the rain against the window. The pain. I find it quite soothing, generally, quite relaxing. I think we might be having thunder coming, so if it starts to thunder, I will continue, but uh, I'll put a little notice in the title, contains uh, heaven farts, so you know heavenly farts so I'd like you to get yourself comfortable lying down on your on your bed a flat surface or sitting in a comfortable chair Just get in touch with how you feel, how you feel right now in this moment, how are you feeling in your body, how are you feeling in your mind, do you feel calm, do you feel Tense, maybe you feel stressed, maybe you've got some anxiety. That might be the reason you're listening to this or watching this video. Because this is also available on YouTube as well as on my podcast. As well as on my website as well. The recordings, I do th two, three different versions of the recording. Just the original recording without music. One which is two hours long with music. One which is five hours long with music. I won't be uploading any ones with music onto my YouTube channel. Because even though the music is copyright, um, open source long as you post the copyright information YouTube don't seem to recognise that so it's no point they'll just uh, take it off or give me a slapped bum for doing it so I'm not gonna not gonna bother I'll just put just one version and if you want to listen to this with music in the background then Maybe go to my website or check out the podcast. I'm everywhere. I'm all over the place. All over the place. On Spotify, iTunes, pretty much wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just put in 
relax and sleep hypnosis daily or just put my name in Jason Newland and you'll find me easy to find hard to forget <laughs> or maybe hard to find easy to forget sometimes you don't actually have to do anything to relax you don't have to do anything it really can be as simple as just sitting down or lying down doing nothing nothing at all just being just breathing and not even in any kind of special way just being alive just being there noticing how you feel not trying to Feel relaxed. So you're not sort of grabbing hold of that feeling and really, you know, craving it. And you're not running away or trying to avoid those feelings of tension, uh, discomfort. And that can be quite hard because as humans, our natural way of being is to move towards pleasure and to move away from pain, which is completely understandable and makes sense really, doesn't it? Especially physical, you know, a small child, they touch a hot stove and they move their hand away very quickly, which is a good thing. It's, it's you know, it's how we survive in life by learning to move away and to maybe avoid danger. However, when it comes to our internal workings as far as emotions go doesn't quite seem to work the same way because life is continuously throwing stuff at us uh, we're being bombarded really with negativity a lot of the time whether it's the news on television the newspapers the internet uh, people you know just talking about their problems and uh, or ourselves thinking about our problems and focusing on the negative stuff and um, worrying about all kinds of things Again, that's natural. So this isn't a space to start like having a go at yourself and I'm not going to be start like saying, oh, you should be different and you should do things different and you shouldn't. Basically, that would be like me saying you shouldn't be a human being because worrying and focusing on negative things and uh, trying to avoid suffering and wanting to try and cling on to feeling good is natural but it's not necessarily the best way to do it because sometimes the 
easiest way to actually let go of stress and discomfort, uh, anxiety, emotional pain is to just allow it to be there. To stop pushing it away. It's almost like when we're pushing it away, we are feeding it, we are giving it energy. It gets an opportunity to actually get some kind of energy and strength behind. So you're pushing, it's pushing, you know, and it causes more stress within us when we try to push stress away but when you just allow it to be there you just accept that it's there there is tension when you realise that it's not going to kill you it can't hurt you because it is you. When you try and push it away, it almost becomes something separate. Something as if it's something against you. Once you realize it is you, you can't be against yourself because there's no logic in that. There's no, that's really quite kind of impossible. doesn't mean you're necessarily on your own side but you could become you can get to that point where you are more in touch with how you feel and that can start or continue just by allowing those feelings to be there don't push them away That doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it all day, every day. But for maybe half an hour, each day you can just sit down or lie down. And just get in touch with the feelings. Open all the windows, all the doors. Let everything come and go as it pleases. All emotions, all feelings, all worries, concerns, all pleasures, everything. Just let it all come. Then go, then more comes. Just like clouds in the sky, just floating by. You start to realize that actually it's not that powerful. These feelings that in our mind were like really uh, almost superhuman, sort of really, really powerful as if they had control over us. you start to realize that they don't. They really don't. And it's not that we have to have control over them either. There are ways to do that. But I quite like the idea of I'm very lazy, a very lazy person, you know, I like things to be done properly, but also I like to take the easy, gentle route, I'm not into, um, you know, when people go to the gym and say no, no pain, no gain, I just, no pain thanks, I'm not into pain, and 
with stress and anxiety, that's suffering enough to not add more on top. You know, I don't want the solution or the cure or the reduction of anxiety to come via having more. I don't want to go through pain to get to pleasure. I don't want to go through pain to get to relief. I'd rather just allow it to happen organically. But it's not just going to happen on its own. It requires you and me to just open our minds to the possibility that by almost welcoming these feelings into us instead of trying to push them away, barricading the house, you know, almost reminds me of like a zombie the walking dead or a zombie film where all these zombies are trying to get into the cabin and they're you know trying to block the windows and the doors and it's the point you know it's i mean you, they're gonna do it because they're not just gonna just leave the doors but in the end the zombies always get through they always get in but in this case That stuff outside the cabin can't hurt you. It hurts you more when it's outside of the cabin than when it's inside of the cabin. So when you're pushing it away, you can't see it. It's like a small child with a monster in the dark. But there's no monster there. But because the child can't see, it's scared because it, it, the child can't see that there's no monster there. But once a child sees, they're less scared. It's like, oh, there's nothing there. And it changes things. So when you allow those feelings just to come in, you get to see them. So they're not this big, scary, roaring um, thing that you're, you're at all costs trying to avoid having contact with. Because you're already feeling the pain from it. You've already got the anxiety and the tension and the illness possibly connected with that that's, out, that's trying to get feels like a monster trying to get to you almost sometimes. It can. The worry. But then you just let it in. But you're consciously aware of it. It's not just, you're not oblivious to it. You're just allowing all those feelings just to come in. And all you do is just observe. The first thing you notice is they're not scary. They're not monsters. They're not. And they can't hurt you either. The reason they're not monsters and the reason not, they're not really scary and the reason they can't hurt you is because they are you. They're part of you. Just like your feet aren't scary and they can't hurt you. Your hands, your nipples, your knees, it's part of you. I mean, some parts of us might look a bit scary. My face, for example, but it's not. It's just a part of you. And these feelings, these emotions that are just there. Just there like, you know, stars at night in the sky. They're just there. They're not really doing much. And you realise that all 
those feelings actually wanted, all those feelings craved was entry. That was it. Just wanted to be allowed in. Wanted to be, I guess, acknowledgement from you. Didn't want to be outcasts. Didn't want to feel like they were separate from you. So you welcome them in. Come in. Come in stress. Come in worry about the past. Uh, come in regret. Come in all these different things. Worries for the future. Uh, come in anger. Come in all these different emotions. Just let them in. They can't hurt you. Because if they could hurt you, they would have done already. If our emotions could actually destroy us, which I think is, or stress, if stress could destroy you, it already would have done. It can't really harm us because it's just a feeling. Our reaction to those feelings is where the harm is. So when you just allow these feelings in, allow them to flutter around and wander in and maybe wander out, realizing that actually what they thought was behind the door is kind of the uh, similar to us what we thought was behind the door we thought something perhaps really scary was there something very harmful to us and when they come in we open the doors we allow these feelings just to be there we allow ourselves to just accept that the emotions are there, the feelings are there, anxiety, stress, it's just there. It unburdens you, it reduces the anxiety and the stress that you had. You feel more relaxed because you realize that They can't harm you. They don't have the power. They don't have any power at all. Just the feeling. Feelings become stronger when you refuse to acknowledge them. As soon as you acknowledge them, as soon as you allow them, or more, welcome them. In a way, that's like kryptonite to Superman. You know, they don't, whatever power they thought they had, you know, can you imagine lots of little Supermen running in? Or like maybe a, a super villain that had superpowers and they're running in through the door. I'm going to do this, I'm going to zap you with my eye lasers and I'm going to, and they're trying to fly and they just keep falling on the floor because they've got no powers. It's banging into each other almost funny to watch because whatever energy they had before has been zapped from them as soon as they entered your space see the only energy the only strength and they do get stronger the more you push them away. It's almost kind of that, that in, impending, that pending doom of uh, that anxiety getting stronger and stronger and distress. And you can feel it, even though it's not 
it's maybe the other side of the door. You can feel it and it affects us and it makes us ill. But when that door's open, you see them just falling in on the floor with no strength, no power at all, no way to control us. In fact, they don't, they almost just seem to just shrink. Not our doing, it just happens naturally. So we don't have to do anything. That's why I like this, because as I said, I'm very lazy. I like the easiest route possible. So to be able to just, you know, sit here or lie down on a bed and do nothing and just observe the feelings the stress, the anxiety, the thoughts, the worries, the uh, regrets from the past, the concerns for the future, uh, the memories of conflict, uh, of bad things maybe that have happened and things that we can never change. We don't need to change them. We don't need to do anything that happened. And that unresolved stuff just comes in. And we would have thought it would have so much strength, so much power that it could harm us, that it could cause us to uh, re-experience old memories and feelings and, and that we would crumble. When in fact what happens when you welcome those feelings in, as soon as they enter and get close to you, they're the ones that crumble. It's an old emotion. I mean, in reality, expecting an old feeling from years and years ago an emotion that we've been pushing away, it has strength because we're pushing it away. But in a way, in reality, to expect that to walk through the door and have the strength it had 20 years ago, the ability that it had, you know, our reaction would be the same. That's like expecting the tough kid from school you know, when you were 14 years old, there was at least one really tough kid, usually gone through puberty at the age of nine, and he's a giant, and he's got muscles, and people are scared of him, and stuff like that. He might be the school bully, he might be nice, you know, he might be an athlete, but if he was to walk through the door now, 35 years after leaving school, he's not going to be the same person. First of all, he's not going to be hugely bigger than you the way he was. He might still be big and strong, but he's not going to be anything uh, in comparison to what he was. And he might, he might be an old man with a walking stick. But whatever strength he had out there when he gets in here nothing in fact the, the reality there was no strength out there either because that was just our perception that was our expectation and as we all know really if you expect something there's a stronger chance that you would experience it So when you open the door, open the windows, open your heart, open your mind to having, welcoming even, any emotions, stress, anxiety, tension, 
allow it all, physical pain even, however weird it may seem, chronic pain, just to allow it all just to enter, anything that you're pushing away, and notice how one by one, they just crumble, literally they walk through, it's all, almost like they're vampires, you know, oh I'm going to break your neck, and then suddenly, they just realise there's a window and a light shining on them, and they just go, and just sizzle, like a sausage, So that, that perceived danger, and I think danger is not really an excessive word. It feels dangerous, doesn't it? it, it before, you know, when you imagined how you felt about even the idea of allowing the tension and the stress and those feelings that you would categorize as being horrible to actually not just allow them to enter your space, but almost to welcome them. Like, come on, man, come on, come on in. And the more you see and experience those feelings just collapsing, crumbling, you then start to expect that yourself because that's what you're expecting because that's what you've seen whether you expect it or not that's what's going to happen but that expectation changes your mind instantly changes your mind it's almost like like I put my fingers into your brain and just change something very a tiny little little change that transforms the way you think it can almost uh, seem magical in a way you know like when someone's got a phobia of flying or something and or you know whatever it could be spiders I used to be petrified of spiders a learnt phobia, by the way. I learnt it from someone else. And one day, I'm not sure what I did, but I didn't care anymore. Did not care. I can sleep with a spider in the room. In the corner. Don't care. It's just zero. It's like z literally zero interest. And it can almost seem magical when something that you used to believe changes, like just changes, or ding. I mean, you might have a, ma a, a musical skull, I don't know. But you know, just it changes. You feel different. And that way of changing it happens all the time in life it happens all the time if you met someone and they were rude to you the first time you met them let's say your son or daughter brings you know you have a, a dinner and they invite you around to their to his girlfriend's house or his boy or boyfriend's house whatever and the father's there and the father's really rude to you you're gonna think what an asshole it's natural like horrible horrible man don't want to see him again horrible you might even think oh what if the what if the son is like him what if he's gonna end up like him you start, may start worrying about your daughter or your boy, whoever, in that scenario. So you've got that, and it's fixed. It's in your mind, that's it. He's, he's a horrible man, don't like him, don't want to see him again. And you might have all these emotions about him, and you know. 
And that's a fixed perspective. That's it. And you know that pretty much nothing could change that. Even if it was nice to you next time. It would take a lot of being nice to you to justify how he was. Because in your mind, he's, he's an idiot, he's horrible, don't like him, he's nasty. Now if you find out, it might not be for like three, four months, you find out that on that day he just got back from the hospital and been told that he had prostate cancer. And, uh, you know, and for the last four months he's been going through treatment. But you didn't know about it because you weren't told. No one told you. It's personal stuff. You, you know, you're not that close. You're the, your son and daughter, your daughter or whatever's only been dating for a few months. You didn't find out that stuff. So as soon as you hear that, that that miserable old git that was rude to you like four months ago, ago You find out that that day before, the exact day that you went around in the evening, he just come back from the hospital to be told that he had uh, a serious illness. And he came back to a house full of people, maybe, or came back to being told, yeah, we're having visitors. He had no space to himself to be able to even absorb or to contemplate or to think about the situation. And hence, he was not in his right space. He was acting differently to how perhaps he would normally act. I can't imagine many people would be hugely entertaining in that situation but imagine you hear that information you hear it what happens to you what happens to your opinion to your and it was very solid it was very pretty much unmovable opinion towards that man he's an asshole don't like him horrible don't want to see him again. Suddenly, bang. Changed. Bing. It's almost like someone's put their fingers into your brain. Changed the switch. Just turned the switch off. And not only do you not feel hostility towards them. Because that hostility may have grown. Because you may have been invited round. And every time. You know. The, your, your, child, your child was getting closer to this lady or man. And you knew that in the future. All family occasions. You're going to have to see. This horrible man that you don't like. And maybe you're planning for the future. To feel miserable. In those situations. It's a human way of doing things isn't it. Let's plan some misery. Instantly, you hear the reality of why he was, how he was, and click. Your brain changes, not only to no longer feel hostility towards him, but the compassion do you feel instantly almost like love arises towards that person that a minute ago you didn't like didn't even want to hear his name maybe I mean he, he might have been really rude you know it might have been a horrible horrible evening Instantly, 
compassion, love, kindness, all different kinds of feelings changed your perception, changed how you felt instantly. And that's, I think, what happens when it comes to anxiety and stress. When you realize that the only power it had was the power that you were given it by trying to push it away. And logically, why would you not try and push it away? It's the obvious thing to do. So there's no judgment here. I spent years doing it. Still do do it sometimes. Until I remember. Bring it on, baby. Come on. Come in. There's nothing there. The feelings change instantly. Huh. Where's it gone? And it has just gone. There's nothing there. And again, click, your brain changes. And you realize that It's going to be very hard to go back to how you were. Because once you know, I mean, I know I like, I like to go extreme, but once you know there's a crocodile in your bathtub, you can't unknow it. You're not going to accidentally get in there and have a little bath. Oh, a crocodile, I forgot about that. No. <laughs> if you're me, I mean, I'm, you know, I'd probably try and uh, seek help with that. I just wouldn't <laughs> leave it in there. But even if it's a tiny little one, a little tiny little alligator, the size of a, your hand, oh, it could still do damage, couldn't it? So once you know, you can't forget, it's there. And once your brain changes, it changes. It's like, ooh, ding, instant. So it's very hard to go back to that type of thinking of trying you know, to push stuff away when you realize now that, first of all, there is nothing really to push away. And if you allow yourself to just experience the moment, experience whatever feelings, allow them in. Keep an open door, keep all the windows open. In fact, just knock the damn walls down. You know, metaphorically. Just let them come and go. Let them come and go. And they get what they want. They just want your acknowledgement, your attention. And they just dissolve. They crumble. They don't have any power over you. Or me. Just feelings. Just emotions. And then you feel more relaxed.
And it could be surprising how easy you feel calm and loose in your body and in your mind. It may actually surprise you. Just how simple you can go from the way that you used to feel to how you feel now. How your mind has slowed down. It has, hasn't it? Your mind has slowed down. Your body feels more relaxed. Yeah? I know it has. I can feel it. I can feel the force. Or lack of force. I can feel the gentleness. Just being here, just being aware, not clinging on to anything, not pushing anything away, not avoiding, not hiding, just saying, hey, anyway, it's hard for me to hide the size I am. No matter where I went, my big fat belly would be seen. You can see it from space, apparently. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Astronaut. Thank you for your Twitter comment. Even your breathing feels nice. Do you know what I mean? It's just... Feels calm. Very calm. And you know this... This pleasure... To be had. When you feel relaxed. And that's something I think that's often ignored by some people who, you know, do kind of what I'm doing. It's actually feeling relaxed is among the most pleasurable experiences you can have. I was going to say on your own. <laughs> but it feels really nice. It's pleasurable. It's not it's it's not about moving away from pain. Actually it's almost you're embracing the natural pleasure that's there. Our natural state is comfort, relaxation. Of course, when you're running for a bus, you're not going to be relaxed, probably. Or if you're running around and rushing around and, you know, playing sports or... Those sports can be relaxing. But, you know, you, you could be thinking and stuff. When you're sitting down in a chair, lying down on your bed, this is a great opportunity to actually embrace the pleasure that you feel. And it 
really is pleasurable. It's a really nice feeling. Really. It's calming. It's lovely. And I think that's sometimes overlooked. Maybe undervalued. Because I don't know about you, but I like feeling pleasure. As your mind slows down. When you focus on your brain, like physically, I'm focusing on my brain. You know, of course, I can't actually access it directly, physically. But I can get a sense of my brain and it feels nice and it's it's not far you know if you tap your scalp you are sending vibrations through your brain you know it's not a big distance between your the top of your head and the beginning of your brain of course there's no nerve no uh, feeling inside the brain itself no physical feeling there's no nerve endings in there but you can I get a sense of being able to feel the brain and it feels really nice it's really because even though there may not be any nerve endings in the actual brain itself all of that physical sensations come from the brain it's kind of uh, some weird of almost doesn't almost make sense in a way but feels nice just breathing not controlling your breath just breathing naturally and the breathing does naturally slow down and that cool air that you breathe in it's pleasurable your hands relaxed and loose your feet also loose and relaxed your legs your arms your chest your stomach I mean Maybe you've not even taken any notice of any parts of your body for maybe most of the duration of this recording because you've been focusing on the words and the meanings and how it how it affects you and your experience in this moment and those changes that have been caused by you opening your mind and allowing those changes to occur Which then leaves you with a feeling of you can have a feeling of accomplishment. That sounds like a good idea. A feeling of actually you've done something pretty amazing for yourself. You've proven to yourself that. There's so much more to you than maybe you realized. You've proven that you can relax maybe more than you realized. You've proven to yourself that you can let go of things 
maybe you didn't even want to let go of. But now, perhaps some of those things don't really seem as important as they once did. Because once you not just realize, but you know that outside things don't really have the power to affect you unless you decide to let them. And by just sitting for half an hour or an hour a day or maybe just 10 minutes and just allowing whatever feelings there are to just come and go as they please and you can watch those negative emotions, thoughts and feelings crumble to the floor. Because they don't have any they don't have any power. You're no longer feeding them that power to function. You've turned off that switch in your brain, in your mind that was feeding them that power. And now, just like any electrical circuit, if you cut the circuit, disconnect at any point in an electrical circuit, the whole thing stops. And they just crumble crumble to the floor. And it's that sense of peace that you experience within you that you may actually be surprised by. sense of lightness physically and emotionally and you feel pleasure You feel relaxed and calm. You feel good. Maybe. feelings of confidence within you has really grown. Your confidence in you, in your own ability to accomplish what you choose to do in your life and to have more belief in yourself and your abilities. Maybe you can feel love towards yourself. Feel it. Really feel it within. reason you can love yourself is because you deserve to feel that love. You 
you can embrace it because you deserve to embrace it you deserve to feel wonderful which brings me to the end of this recording so as I always say quite often remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.